Now this is the scary part of the heater installation where we're actually gonna drill some holes into the camper. Um, very concerning for me. So I screwed together a couple pieces of plywood that are the same thickness of what we'll be drilling through here. You can imagine that there. And uh, this is the exhaust pipe on the heater. And per the manufacturer's instructions, it's not to be shortened. No sharp 90s, uh, can't have a lot of turns, anything that might obstruct it. So I felt that when I drilled through, it needed to be at an angle so it could continue this shape as it flowed towards the back of the camper. And you can see I drilled this as an angle. And by doing so, it's able to come through that hole and stay up tight to my plywood here. And then to determine where the holes need to be drilled front to back, we use this as a uh, guide because we wanted to end up at the back of the camper. We held it here, marked our camper, transferred those markings underneath where I was actually going to drill the hole. Used a uh, hole saw, and this is the angle that I used to drill through that. You can see about like that there. To see if our uh, intake and exhaust tube was going to run the way we wanted it to, we've hooked it to the heater. We got the heater mocked up inside and we've got these uh, exhaust and intakes hooked up to them. But this is how they will run right along the side, holding up snug here. That's the intake. And the intake, the end of the intake and the end of the exhaust is supposed to be a meter and a half away from each other. So we've more than done that. This is how our exhaust will run. And both of them need to keep a little bit of a downward flow so there's no water that uh, puddles up in there and causes any issues. And our measurements come out pretty good because we ended up right at the back. That's what we were shooting for. Now let's go inside to show you how we mock the heater up. Okay, the, the heater will be inside of a cabinet, but for now we just got it set up on these two befores so we can move it forward to back, side to side, and get the proper height we needed for our exhaust and intake pipes so they would run properly. We've got the intake and exhaust tubes mounted using P-clips. On the exhaust tube, we ha you have to use a high temp silicone. Now on the intake, I just use a regular silicone to seal up that hole. I uh, got the quarter inch propane line coming out and I put a tubing around that, black tubing, so it blends in and that will help protect it. Now I've got the heater running right now. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but when it's running, I can hold on to the end of that too. Here's a quick look at the intake and exhaust tube and the propane line with the camper on the truck. Uh, if you go to do an installation like this, I would suggest having the camper set up in a manner to where you can raise it up off the truck, then lower it back onto the truck very easily. So you see what your clearances are and where your lines need to actually run uh, for everything to work out. This bed rail that runs right down the middle is your main issue that you have to work around there. I have an 11 pound propane tank to supply the heater and I bought an aluminum bracket for it and I had that welded to an aluminum plate which allows it to mount to this jack bracket. So with a couple bolts undoing those, it easily comes off and on as needed. We got heat. The heater is installed.
this is the propane line that comes out of the back uh, going down through the cabinet to the outside of the camper we put a plastic conduit around it to help protect it because we're going to use around the heater for storage on this side coming out the top is the thermostat and power lines underneath is the intake and exhaust tubes which also run outside of the camper this is the power cord coming down through the cabinet into this compartment where it runs into our fuse box we had an empty spot for it there protected by a fan, five amp fuse this is the thermostat cord which we've ran around the perimeter of the cabinet using white duct tape to hold it in place and also to help conceal it after making its way around the cabinet it ends up here with the thermostat plug we got the thermostat installed over here is the heater duct warm air vent and over on the side is the vent that uh, replaces the air for the blower. The heater installs complete now, so the only thing left to do is get out and use it. I'm hoping that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Until next time.